So I will first uh, discuss the campaign finance decision that was uh, handed recently um, by the Supreme Court. And uh, the person who brought that uh, lawsuit is Sean McCatchen, a businessman from Alabama. He was joined by the Republican National Committee. And he filed a lawsuit arguing that uh, he's limited to only about $120,000 in campaign contributions every two-year election cycle. And that this was a violation of his freedom of speech. This is what is commonly referred to as rich man's problems. <laughs> his lawsuit was uh, dismissed by the lower court. The Supreme Court uh, uh, then reversed that lower court determination. So some background. First, there are two basic sorts of or kinds of campaign finance limitations. Those that deal with contributions, that is money that is handed more or less directly to candidates or political parties and are in their control. And those that deal with expenditures, that is money that is spent on behalf of political candidates, uh, for example on TV ads or what have you, but without coordination with the candidates themselves. Now, ever since, the, ever since the seminal case on campaign finance, that is Buckley versus Vallejo, 1976, um, the Supreme Court made it harder for the government to restrict expenditures and easier to restrict contributions. The idea is that contributions pose a greater danger of corruption because the money is handed directly to the candidates. Um, and the idea is that restricting contributions also imposes a lesser First Amendment concern because people who reach their contribution limits can always engage in expenditures, which are practically unlimited. Now, many people think that this is a distinction without a difference. That is, they think that uh, both contributions and expenditures pose a similar danger of political corruption, or like Justice Thomas, for instance, that they similarly do not, do not pose any danger to political corruption. But the distinction remains a staple of First Amendment doctrine on campaign finance. And in this regard, McCutcheon is, in this respect, more radical than the Citizens United decision. Because Citizens United, if you remember 2010, was a decision that invalidated restriction on expenditures, whereas the McCutcheon decision is a restriction that uh, invalidated the limitation on contributions. That is the sort of uh, of campaign finance uh, limitations that the Supreme Court traditionally upholds. Now, there are two types of contribution limits that are imposed by federal law. There are limits as to the amount that uh, a person may give to a specific candidate or a political party or a political uh, uh, committee that is associated with them. Um, and there are aggregate limits, that is, a limit on the total amount of money that an individual may give in, a, in an election cycle, in a two-year election, election cycle, and the invalidated provision was about the aggregate limit. That it, is, it left intact, at least for now, it left intact the individual uh, uh, per candidate uh, and party limit on contributions. Now, lots of commentary in the media concerned the fact or criticized the fact or praise the fact that the Supreme Court thinks that money is speech. But in some important respects, this is not really the heart of the issue. Because even if campaign finance regulations are to some extent a regulation of speech, we are still constitutionally, the government is constitutionally allowed to limit awfully lots of speech, right? We restrict speech in many areas from uh, incitement to violence to uh, obscene speech, solicitation of crimes, false advertisement, etc., etc. So the question is not so much whether political campaign financiers are a form of speech, but whether they are the form of speech that in fact can be constitutionally restricted or regulated. Both the majority and the dissent um, in Citizens United and in McCutcheon adhere to the view that the government may restrict campaign finance insofar as it does so in advancing or in rather in fighting political corruption. So if the government's interest in the regulation in fact advances its interest in fighting political corruption, that uh, campaign finance regulation or restriction may be constitutional. But they have a huge disagreement about what political corruption actually is. And this is really the heart of the disagreement 
between the dissenting justices uh, and the majority justices in McCutcheon. So the four dissenting justices, this is the liberal wing on the court, Justices Breyer, Ginsburg, Sotomayor, and Kagan, claim that a political system that allows donors to have undue access to politicians and to have undue influence on politicians and political decisions simply by virtue of donating big money to their campaigns is a system that is politically corrupt and therefore that the government is within its constitutional powers when it operates to fight this phenomenon, again, of big money exercising influence over political decision making and, and enjoying great access to politicians. But the justices in the majority simply disagree with this view of democracy. That is, they think that there is no corruption, not the sort of corruption that the government legitimately can fight when big money influences political decisions. Political corruption, says the majority, and said the opinion by Chief Justice Roberts here, and said the same of the opinion by Justice Kennedy in Citizens United, political corruption is only that the government is allowed to fight by restricting campaign finances, is only quid pro quo corruption. That is the explicit exchange of money for a political favor. So for example, when a donor comes and writes a check to a politician and says, I am giving you this check, but in exchange I want you to vote against raising the minimum wage, that is a quid pro quo corruption that the government is within its powers to, uh, to fight and that may make campaign finance regulations constitutional. But when a big donor writes a check and then says, he turns away and then he turns back and says, oh, by the way, I wanted you to know that I'm a big opponent of increasing the minimum wage, that is not the sort of political corruption that according to the majority opinion, the government may fight. In fact, the majority makes no bones about it, thinks that this is really democracy in action. So let me finish with this quote from Chief Justice Roberts' opinion. Government regulation may not target the gratitude a candidate may feel towards those who support him or the political access such support may afford. Ingratiation and access are not corruption. They embody a central feature of democracy that constituents support candidates who share their beliefs and interests, and candidates who are elected can be expected to be responsive to these concerns. Right? So this is a huge ideological division about the very nature of democracy, if you will. Now, I personally think that this vision of democracy is in conflict with the one person, one vote principle, but again, this is the vision of democracy that we are likely to see in the years to come from the Roberts Court. <laughs>